Welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at the renin angiotensin aldosterone system mechanism. Let's begin. The Jasta glomerular cells, also referred to as the granular cells, within the afferent arterial of the nephron contain proranin. The afferent arterial are illustrated here. The afferent arterial is illustrated here and that will be the efferent arterial. Proranin is secreted constitutively in its inactive form and once it is in its inactive form we refer to that as zymogen. Activation of the Jasta glomerular cells causes the cleavage of proranin to renin. Then the question goes what factors are going to be responsible for the activation of the Jasta glomerular cells, also referred to as the granular cells. There are three factors that contribute to the activation of the Jasta glomerular cells. What are those factors? The first one is the low blood pressure. Low blood pressure. The second one is beta activation. And the third one is activation of the macula densa cells in response to decreased sodium load in the distal convoluted tubule. All right, renin released into circulation then acts on angiotensinogen, which is also a zymogen. And this angiotensinogen is produced in the liver. Renin acts on this angiotensinogen, causing it cleavage into angiotensin 1. And angiotensin 1 is a precursor for angiotensin 2. So in that case, angiotensin 1 is then converted to angiotensin 2 by an enzyme known as angiotensin converting enzyme. The angiotensin converting enzyme is produced by the vascular endothelium of the lungs majorly and to some extent that of the kidney. The vascular endothelium of the lungs will produce majorly angiotensin converting enzyme which we call ACE and also the vascular endothelium of the kidneys also produce angiotensin converting enzyme to some extent. Angiotensin 1 when acted upon by angiotensin converting enzyme will be converted into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 then binds to its angiotensin 2 receptors type 1 and type 2 causing the realization of the effects on the following structures. The first one, the brain, the adrenal glands, the kidneys and the systemic arterioles. The next thing we will talk about is the angiotensin 2 itself. For angiotensin 2, it has only about one to two minutes for its function, meaning angiotensin 2, the half-life of it is one to two minutes, after which it will be degraded by peptidases into angiotensin 3 and angiotensin 4. Angiotensin 3 has 100% aldosterone stimulating activity and only 40% pressure effect. Whilst angiotensin 4 has further decreased the systemic effect. Now let's talk about the effects of angiotensin 2 on the structures that we mentioned. That is the kidney, the adrenal gland, the brain and the systemic arterioles. Alright, so let's talk about the effect of angiotensin 2 on the kidneys. So the angiotensin 2 acts to increase sodium hydrogen exchange at the proximal convoluted tubule. And when this happens, it results in the increased reabsorption of sodium. And increased reabsorption of sodium increases the osmolarity of the blood, causing flu shift into the extracellular space as well as the blood volume. This then increases the blood volume increasing the blood pressure. Let's move ahead and talk about the effects of 
angiotensin 2 on the adrenal gland. You should know that angiotensin 2 acts on the zona glomerulosa of the adrenal cortex, stimulating the release of aldosterone. And aldosterone, you should know that it is a steroid hormone. And for all steroid hormones, it will take a longer period of time to act. It will take several hours to days to act. Why? Because aldosterone needs to bind to the nuclear receptors, meaning that it needs to percolate the cell all the way to the nucleus to bind to the nuclear receptors, altering gene transcription before the effect can be realized. So in that case, aldosterone half-life will be several hours to days. And if you compare that to angiotensin 2, as you know, it is just one to two minutes. So angiotensin 2 has a shorter half-life as compared to the longer half-life of aldosterone. Then what then does aldosterone do? Aldosterone acts to stimulate the insection of luminal sodium channels and basolateral sodium potassium ATPase proteins at the distal convoluted tubules and the collecting that. And this increases sodium reabsorption and potassium excretion. An increased sodium reabsorption causes the osmolarity of the blood to increase and this results in the flu shift into the blood volume as well as the extracellular space, increasing the blood pressure. Alright, let's move ahead and look at the effects of angiotensin 2 on the systemic arterioles. So angiotensin 2 binds to the G protein copper receptors, leading to a secondary messenger cascade causing a potent arteriolar vasoconstriction. And the potent arteriolar vasoconstriction increases the peripheral vascular resistance. And this also increases the blood pressure. Why? Because blood pressure is equal to the cardiac output times the total peripheral vascular resistance. So as the peripheral vascular resistance increases, the blood pressure increases. Let's move ahead and look at the effects of angiotensin 2 on the brain. And angiotensin 2 is going to have three effects on the brain. The first one is angiotensin 2 binds to the hypothalamus mediated by the subphonical organ stimulating test. And this results in increased water uptake. And increased water uptake causes an increase in the blood volume and an increase in the blood volume causes an increase in the blood pressure because in phases, volume is directly proportional to pressure. The next effect of angiotensin 2 on the brain is that it stimulates the release of anti-directive hormone, also known as arginine 8 vasopressin, by the posterior pituitary gland. Bear in mind that the posterior pituitary gland does not produce anti-directic hormone. Rather, the anti-directic hormone is produced by the supraoptic and the paraventricular nuclear of the hypothalamus. The secreted anti-directic hormone by the posterior pituitary stimulates the insection of aquaporin channels at the collecting duct, and this increases water reabsorption are they collecting that? Increased water reabsorption causes an increase in the blood volume. And as the blood volume increases, the blood pressure increases. The final effect of angiotensin 2 on the brain is that angiotensin 2 decreases the sensitivity of the baroreceptor reflex or complex. As such, it causes a decrease in the baroreceptor response to an increasing blood pressure, keeping the sole objective of RAS intact. Then the question is, what is the objective of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system mechanism? The objective is to always maintain an increased blood pressure, is to always make sure that the blood pressure is kept at a threshold value. So at any time, the blood pressure is dropping, definitely the renin angiotensin aldosterone 
system mechanism would be activated. So in that case, diminishing the bioreceptor response to an increasing blood pressure it will definitely keep the RACS mechanism objective intact. I believe we've learned something new today. Kindly make sure to subscribe to my channel that is Concept in Medicine, like, share and also recommend to friends. And don't forget to put the notification button on so as to receive first-hand information about my uploads. My name is Dr. Adele and once again this is Concept in Medicine. See you next time. Bye-bye.